Okay, continuing on with the human brain section. We just finished in the last video talking about the difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic system. Do you remember which one is involved in fight or flight? What about these? Can you match these up? Pause the video and give that a go. The pupil reflex. You can see often in crime shows and stuff like that when someone finds a body and they want to go figure out that person's still alive or not there's a number of things they do they check for pulse um, and then they all could they can also check the pupil reflex so I'm gonna turn the volume here and just play this so you can see what's going on while I reveal some of these things the pupil reflex when you automatically shine light into the eye the the pupil actually will will constrict and that's to limit the amount of light that's going in and it helps to prevent damage to your retina because a lot of concentrated light can actually damage those cells back there so it's a reflex that actually happens you can see what's happening to her people right here it shrinks down compared to this side you can see the difference boom okay and this is something that you don't have to think about it's connected directly to your brain it's a it's a cranial reflex and it's one of the list of checks including no response to pain and no gag reflex that doctors perform before declaring a person is completely brain dead so brain dead is the permanent absence of measurable brain activity okay finally pain pain is a good thing right if someone comes and stabs you in the back literally if you don't feel the pain and you don't see the blood leaking out behind you, if you have no sensation of that, that, that that's not a good thing because you won't do anything to try to stop the bleeding and then eventually you'll just kind of get woozy or you'll just pass out and then die from blood loss. So pain is there to tell us that something is wrong in the body. Now over time we've learned that some of the various uh, instinctive pain things that we feel are not necessarily life-threatening. but can actually hinder our ability to do various types of activities and so we've developed drugs that help us to make pain go away a headache for the most part is something that usually won't cause you to die unless in extreme circumstances so normally a headache is just telling you that you're dehydrated or there could be other reasons but that's often one of the main things so um, if you use that kind of biofeedback to help you you can actually prevent yourself from getting headaches or, or curing headaches naturally. So what normally happens is you have something called endorphins. These are natural painkillers. And these natural painkillers, I mean, your body is also recognized that not all, not all of these things are life-threatening. So impulses pass from pain receptors in the skin to sensory areas of the cerebral cortex to help you detect this pain. The feelings of pain arise due to those areas of the cerebral cortex being stimulated and sending those messages to you. And so you perceive that as actual pain. So endorphins and uh, various types of activities can increase endorphins and, you know, getting really excited about something in various different ways doing sports and activities can increase the endorphins being secreted in your body so endorphins block the transmission of impulses at the synapses involved in pain perception so if you have more endorphins then you may feel less pain or not even feel that pain when something else in your body is actually trying to communicate to you that there is some kind of pain sore muscles for example okay i think that's everything about the human brain Go forth, study, and advance your brain techniques and muscles.